Diamond ring? Birthday cake? Dice? Clown face? Poop emoji? Yo, what's up, bro? What's up? What are you sending me? Well, I was sending you that text because I'm getting ready for the googly eye game, which is going to be awesome. But also, I'm so excited for our show on communication tonight. Well, you definitely need to work on that because this is, I don't even know what this is. What? I can see that clearly with these on. You think so? It's going to be a great show, huh? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nightlife. Here it's Kirk and Kellen Gilbert. Here's your host of Nightlife, Tim Bergen. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the memorable and magnanimous Sydney. Yeah. You know what? Thank you for tuning in to Nightlife. I know there are lots of programs out there that you could have chosen to watch. By tuning in to Nightlife, you've chosen to watch something that's encouraging, challenging, humorous. Yeah, yeah. And something that's going to show you Jesus. Well, speaking of Jesus, he's the master communicator. His words are still impacting people 2,000 years later. See, communication is one of the biggest problem areas in most relationships. You'd think with all the ways that we have to communicate today that our communication would be better. But between our president's tweets, the Facebook memes and opinions, 24-7 news, sports, and everything, all these texting fails we get into trouble fairly easily. What do you guys think? Do you think more communication is better or worse? I think sometimes worse. Worse? Absolutely. You think, Sydney, what do you think? Better or worse? All this, you know, we, you got texting all the time, you got all the news, you got everything 24 seven, better or worse? I would say better. Better, okay, well, see, it depends upon the eyes of the beholder. You know what, have you guys, let me ask you this. I had this happen just literally just yesterday where somebody texted me something and I couldn't even read it because they got on the wrong keys or, or something. Have you ever had a texting fail? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. What, what about, what about, did you ever send something that somebody took totally the wrong way? Well, not just that, but send a mass text. When you're supposed to send to one person. Oops. Said my life was over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do we need to confess that on, yeah, on national television here <laughs> so everybody hears what's going on? What about you, Sydney? Do you ever do that? Oh, yeah. I think a lot of times, sometimes my arguments with Jake and I start is because of the texting. Like, we can't hear the tone of the message, so it gets interpreted wrong. <laughs> that's, that's the most dangerous thing. You don't yeah. read tone. It could be, hey, you jerk, and you're just going, ha, 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 And they're reading, what? I'm a jerk? What do you mean? <sighs> you know what? With all this communication available to us, we should have a better understanding of, of some of the things that are really important, like who we are, where are we going? In essence, what is our purpose? In the midst of all the opinions, the yellings, the negativity, do we know how to make a difference? See, it's one thing to complain about a problem, quite another to do something to solve it. See, each of us have been created to impact our world. We all have a purpose. Well, Stacy Walter found her purpose finding herself through national radio broadcasting and she's using it to open doors of communication to help others find their purpose as well. You're gonna enjoy the, her story, so stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Guys, take us out to the break.
Okay, I'm sure you've seen little kids do this. It's called a telephone game, and this group of little kids is all gonna do it here, where I say a phrase, and I'm gonna share it with Kellen, who's gonna share it with Kirk, who's gonna share it with Sydney, who's gonna share it with John, one of our producers, and we're gonna see if we get it, how good the communication is. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, hey John, one of our producers who is great communicator, tell us, <laughs> what is that phrase? 12 tumbling purple pandas pooped. I, I don't remember the last part. <laughs> <laughs> the phrase was, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've used this commonly wherever you've been, 12 tumbling purple people pulled turnips. That's definitely not what I heard. <laughs> not what I heard. <laughs> Thank you guys, appreciate it. We've got uh, our guest is waiting for us, so. Got to get to it. As you already know, our theme for the program is communication. And our guest is sure to have thoughts on what that means. Welcome to the program, radio personality, Stacey Walter. Stacey. Hi. There she is. Uh, radio is normally a bit, not a visual album. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> have a seat. Right. Have Thank a seat. You. Do you, do you have fun doing radio? I it's mean, do you, do you sit there and do funny things? Yeah, I promise it's hard things? work as well, but you know. Do you we do, do funny fun things with, 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 with that, that people don't know because you're on the radio? Not too much. A lot of people are like, you change your voice a lot, and I don't know, it's, I, I feel like I'm being myself, so, you know. Well, you seem like a fun person, but radio wasn't something that, I mean, you didn't go to school for this. You don't have, like, no. a degree in, High school in broadcast. Grad. No. High school grad. How did this happen? Well. So this is sort of a little bit of an embarrassing start. I worked at a subway for a good four years or so, and That's we would listen. We would listen to work. one of the uh, the rock stations there, okay. and we would call in all the time and request songs, <laughs> which is very embarrassing now. So uh, you know, kind of stumbled into it. Yeah, oh, okay. we did. Yeah, okay. got on the air a little bit. And my debut was at a subway over the phone, asking for probably some metal songs. So how'd you go from Subway <laughs> to, to actually being on the radio? So, uh, good old mom, my mom, Stacy's mom, by the way, she's got it going on, uh, kind of pushed me into it. She's like, you are too smart to not do anything with your life. So, you know, we stumbled into it, looked up broadcasting schools and boom, boom, bam, bam. Got hired as a board operator on the weekends at a news talk station. I didn't know what a Rush Limbaugh was or a Sean Hannity, but I quickly learned okay. and kind of stumbled and, and moved and progressed from there, station to station and Position to position. So is this something, though, your your station is an alternative rock station? Yeah, the one I'm currently right. on is, and, yeah. And is it something that this was part of your dream as, as part of you, you growing yeah, up to say, hey, yeah. this is it? I mean, I'm a rock fan. And so actually, whenever I got my start, I sort of interned with uh, my original station was a rock station, 105.9 The X currently. And, you know, that's the one I listened to growing up in high school. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool and surreal being a part of it now. I love it. That was, I mean, th that's not the normal story. I mean, people struggle to see their yeah. dream happen. They, they battle to see their dream happen. But I know part of your passion, because God has kind of put this whole, whole thing together for you, is that you help other people to find whatever their purpose is, what their passion is. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, uh, I actually kind of, as far as, you know, behind the scenes and what I do, uh, outside of radio. I actually volunteered for a youth ministry and a college age ministry for a good 10 years now. I'm finally just transitioning out of that. But all the time, I mean, that's the age that you're in. You're like, oh my gosh, what do I do with my life? Uh, <laughs> that's the question that you get a lot. And so I love pointing people to like, if, if you like to do something, it's probably what God put in your heart in the first place. So. And, and is it just that easy for them? Is it, I mean, do they grab that when you say that? I mean, it, it almost sounds like it could, could be received as trite, saying, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, got just brush it off. Yeah. Whatever you think you want to do, go for it. Um, no, I mean, I think every situation is, is different. And so there's, there's so many steps that take you to whatever the grand scheme is. But really, what I find is in the midst of, like, the big word destiny, a lot of times you're already in your destiny wherever you are, whether you're working a minimum wage job and just kind of, like, <laughs> putting up with the customers that complain to you. You know what I mean? There's, there's, a, there's a purpose and there's steps that you take that I find 
that makes you who you are and develops character in you. And really, in my radio days, the early days, there were people that I worked with that built character in me, for sure. People want a magic pill. They want a magic bullet. Yeah. They want a magic open door. They want something to happen that, that is... Uh, and, and it sounds like you had the, you know, came down with the princess wave, the Cinderella yeah. kind of, kind of a, effect happened in your life. But, but that doesn't always happen. What, how, how do you encourage people to say, you know, listen, it, it is. Yes, you are in your destiny where you're at, but it, it's not always easy to get there. Mm -hmm. How do you encourage them to get to work through the the stuff? I say, be patient, be patient, be patient, and be on the lookout for open doors. I mean, a lot of times it's. It's the connections that you make that really go a long way and seizing opportunities, I think. Just going for it. Now, were you always a Christian? Were you raised? I, uh, about middle school on or so. So, yeah. And how did that happen for you? Uh, my dad, actually. You had like a history of uh, alcoholism and so got cleaned up in one night and turned our family around. I mean, that'll, that'll happen whenever you grab a, a dad and a family, you completely turn our family around. And so we got hooked up with a, a good church that was like, a long ways away. We would drive like 45 minutes to get there from the town that we lived in, but it was worth it. And so, kind of grew from there. And uh, now, you, you could have anywhere along the way, I mean, you're, you know, with working at Subway, listening to the <laughs> X, doing all this stuff, you could have at any time just kind of walked away and said, you know what, that's not cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do my own thing. Why didn't you? That's a good question. Uh, Honestly, I feel like you just don't want to stray from the will of God. And honestly, I feel like there's just been, every little step along the way has been orchestrated by him. And in hindsight, it's a lot easier to see that. Mm -hmm. But he, he's been seeking me out that whole time. And I feel like he seeks everybody out. But it just, you're kind of... Does everybody have a purpose? Does God have a purpose for everybody? Absolutely. I do believe that, yeah. I believe he, like, he knits personalities in such a way that there's, there's a reason the way that you are. It's, it's, there's a big grand picture in the kingdom of God that, that every little individual personality and everybody plays a big part. How do you see God using you as, uh, with, with your position? Is it, is it simply because of your position that that opens doors or are there other ways that God is using you uh, to help you know, other people because of the I position. I see it in a very small process. I kind of even then, I mean, being on the air now for three years, you're kind of like, okay, what is this? I'm, I'm not sure if this is like part of my destiny or what's going to be next necessarily. But then you just, you get like tweets from listeners and such and they're like, hey, that was like a really good segment that you did that like was really encouraging and it wasn't even meant to be a big thing, but it little bits along the way that you're like, there's, there's a reason and there's probably extra steps that I'll be following suit soon. I'm Does sure. the music ever challenge you? Some of the stuff that you hear? Does it ever challenge uh, you? A little bit, but I'm, I'm down with it. It's, I'm savvy and it's, it's good. Honestly, that's part of what I listen to. I actually like, I play in a worship band for mm -hmm. uh, my prior church and then a new church plant that I'm uh, a part of. So it's, you know, kind of night and day <laughs> with some of the music, but it's all good. I, I, I found in, in my personal life, I found things where there, there was some music that, that the church would normally write off and say, ah, it can't be godly. And, mm -hmm. and I, as I listen to the words, I hear people's hearts cry. I hear what they're going through. I hear their challenges. Do you, do you experience some of that with it what you're Yeah, absolutely. There's, I mean, one of my favorite bands uh, is a band called Tool, right? So mm -hmm. uh, really like heavy lyrics. And the dude who actually, uh, he's the front man of the band, uh, you know, necessarily you say that he's the most godly man but it kind of gives you the perspective of what is also out there there's mindsets out there of like masses of people that are listening to this and you're like all right this is maybe not necessarily what we're up against but it's a little bit enlightening absolutely well it's, it's cool that god has you stationed there and mm -hmm. there's no other way to look at it other than god put you there absolutely and that's that that, yeah. that is just wonderful well can you can you hang around with us for a little bit longer we're so. going to do the I, googly yeah, eyes thing <laughs> don't go anywhere well you can you can do your radio program from my computer i'll let you use my computer but we've got a uh, sydney is here with night night scoop For many of us, we strive to be good communicators, but for Chas Smith, it's his passion to send mixed messages. Categories, categories. Architecture. Double banana grains. Rampage. <laughs> Pronouns and things accordingly. Ocasion. Hoofla. <laughs> Kubakakis. Do scenery. Recorded. Qtable. Pronouns and things accordingly. Udabay. Stumblepop. Jamil. Jugla. Facebook. 
Prada, hold on, look at the cold open. Heady Rogan, P. Rogue CD, Ebola. Pinocchio. I don't even know how to say that normally. <laughs> how about E.E. on? Suckers. Rob Tomotos. Smith has more than one million views on YouTube. He is the definition of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a word that I could really mess up that would fantabulous yeah. is what How I was saying. How would you pronounce so. nightlife, like if you would mess it up? Yeah, yeah, something, something. Do, yeah. Do something. That's, <laughs> that's funny. And, and I, I, my question is, why so many hits? How many people actually are like, okay, I don't have anything better to do. I'm going right. to watch this guy mispronounce <laughs> stuff. That is funny. Thank you, Sydney. Appreciate it. It always gives me a laugh. Guys, are you ready for your news? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. Kellen, tell them. Today is National Sandwich Day. And did you realize that the sandwich was first made popular in 1762 by the fourth Earl of Sandwich named John Montague? And we got to give a shout out to a few of our favorite sandwiches. The BLT. The Dagwood. The Cheesesteak. The Submarine or Hoagie. And without a doubt, a childhood favorite, peanut butter and jelly. Happy Sandwich Day, everybody. Okay, we're gonna play a game called Googly Eyes. Take, for example, that it's Pictionary with crazy glasses that hopefully no one will get carsick on as they're drawing. They've gotta draw whatever the picture is on the screen with the great crazy glasses on. So, you've got an easy, a medium, and a hard, and you guys have gotta decide which one you're gonna do, which category, depending upon the points and the time. So, are you ready? Ladies, you're gonna go first. Yay. So, which, which one of you are gonna draw first? I'll go, I'll go. Okay, okay. We'll pick, pick a card. Okay, take your glasses. Don't let Sydney see. Uh -huh. Okay, and which one are you going to do? So I have easy, medium, and hard. We're yes. going to go hard. Oh. Okay, doing the hard one. Okay, we're setting the timer here all the way up to 45 seconds. Go, Stacy, okay. go. This changes everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Church. Uh, preschool, angel. Crap. I went. This is probably um, not the best way to go about it. I lost count. <laughs> Seven maids. <laughs> Uh -huh. Seven. Uh-huh, all right. Made the milk Okay, we got 15 seconds, 15 seconds. You'll know this girl. Jesus. <laughs> this girl, Jesus. Um. Okay. Back to Sunday school. Man, I should have gone easy. Can I can I retract and go easy? You, 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 no, you, we've no. only got it. You've I've only committed. got like I've committed. 20 seconds left. little lamb. <laughs> Time is almost up. I'm gonna blame it on up. the Google Glass. <laughs> Okay, can you guys guess? What do you think? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, Yay! Yeah. 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 they get three. The guys get three. Okay, good yeah. job. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> and you did pretty good with those glasses on. I'm pretty okay. impressed. Let me draw this one. What's that? I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> impressed. Let me take this, take this back here. Okay, guys, let me uh, put this one down and we'll right, move we on we got to the next one. Here's who's going to go first. Kelly. I will. Okay, you're going to choose, choose your card. Choose your card. Tim, I can't, I can't see. <laughs> take your glasses off first. <laughs> Thank you. Some people's kid. <laughs> ah, you can't look at it. <laughs> Thank you. Get a new card. New card. Okay. 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 You gotta do the easy one, medium one, or hard one? Um, let's do the... The hard one. I got this. All right, we'll do the hard one. <laughs> oh, you don't know what you're in for. Okay, we're doing the hard one. I'm getting out of your way. We are setting the timer at 45 seconds, and we're ready to go. Go ahead, Kellen, do the hard one. Okay. <laughs> I'm really gotta hurry. I'm really surprised what they can that? see through this stuff. <laughs> Ballerina? I'm princess. Tim, is that, is that close, Tim? Is that close enough? Um, uh, ballerina, princess. Um, Cinderella. Uh, so uh, close, Cinderella. So um, to... uh, Sleeping Beauty. Uh, help me. Uh, music. Um, ballerina. Dancing Queen. Oh, well, do, do, Robin, do we do we give it to yes. him? Yes. It, it is ballet. Y'all, come on. <laughs> She's giving it to him. Okay, our producer's giving it to him. Okay. That's so the music that was the hard one, John. So oh, they, the Kirk and Kellen have six. It's all on you. Oh, no. Okay, now here we go. Okay, Sydney, you got to choose okay. your card, okay? Uh, okay, let me see what you got. Oh, I'll do the medium. Going to do the medium for yeah. two points. Sydney's doing the medium. 
Okay, Sid, here we go. Now you realize you got less time. Okay, ready? Go. Oh, I do. Okay. Okay, a goldfish, a whale, a marine animal of sorts. Is there? Is it under the sea? Uh, is it? Okay, okay. I see where you're going with this. Um, kindergarten drawing. Uh, that is not meant to be insulting. I just don't know what you're going with. A submarine. Oh, it's definitely a whale. It's an airplane. It's an airplane of sorts. A plane. Airport. Stacy! <laughs> I'm looking here and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure what that is, but okay, okay, you guys. You got me with you. You ready? Okay, you gotta pick your card here. All right. Yeah. Get rid of that one. That was the one they just did. Pick your card. Okay, which one are you gonna do? Um, let's do this one. I think you can do that. I think I got I think you can do it. You need your glasses yeah. though. That's Okay, they have chosen the hardest one. John, get ready. The hardest one. Are you ready? We're gonna turn on get the timer going here. I get so excited. Okay, go ahead. Timer's on. Right. Go. Okay. It's a car. Um uh race car. There we go. Oh, that's, that's it. What's it? Oh! With with 30 seconds left, he got it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> See, shout out to the Earl Earhart. Yeah, okay. You're drawing Dale Earhart. I don't even think they're a hot dog tip or a race car. I just feel like it went. <laughs> Good, okay. So where are we, John? Who won Who won the Googly Eyes game? The guys Woo! won the Googly Eyes game. All right. Yay! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We will be we will be right back after this. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the program today. It really is a shame when people don't know their purpose. God opened the door for Stacy. God doesn't have favorites, so he will if you allow him. He'll open a door for you. One of the key things to knowing your purpose is really believing that there's a God in heaven and that he actually loves you. And he likes you too. See, we're told by King David that God is always thinking about us and that his thoughts for us are more than the sands of the sea. It's hard to believe that there is a plan for your life if you struggle with believing that God does know you and that he loves you. Well, one of our friends can talk to you and help you to understand that truth for your life. Call 888-665-4483. Allow one of our friends to talk to you about how much God really does love you. So once you believe that, it's easy to believe that the same Heavenly Father that loves you so much must have a plan for you. By the way, he did set up several lines of communication, you know. He talks to us as we read our Bible. He'll talk with us through others that the Lord will bring into your life. And when we learn to wait on him, he'll talk to us through prayer. He really does love you, you know. It's not fake, he's not an imaginary God, he's very real. Give him a chance, open up to him, and he'll open up your future. Thank you for watching. From all of us, the Nightlife team, I hope that we brought a little light into your night. We'll see you next time. Guys, take us out.